So I just arrived here in Calhoun, Georgia for the School of His Presence tomorrow. I'm staying on Lover's Lane and there was a rainbow over the hotel that I'm staying in. It was just special to me that he promises his love to us and he promises me he's going to show up tomorrow as the precious bridegroom. This is everything to me. It's the only thing that's been on my mind is Christ, the precious, matchless, wonderful, all-consuming bridegroom. The School of His Presence has just ended here in Calhoun. What a wonderful time being in the presence of the bridegroom. This has been the consuming theme in my heart recently, just him as the bridegroom. Not only does John the Baptist call him bridegroom, he himself calls himself the bridegroom. And in Revelation, we see that in the end, the church is named the bride and she cries out for his return, that it is the spirit and the bride saying, come Lord, Maranatha. I believe in these last days, we as the church are going to recognize him as bridegroom, which will make us the sweet bride. And we will have a fresh crying out, a Maranatha in our blood that will say, come quickly, my Lord. Yeah, it's a wonderful day today here in Calhoun. I will fly out in the morning. What's up, guys? Oh, should we? Yeah. I just want to tell me this morning to say drink all the water. No way. <laughs> Look how many waters it <laughs> left. You need a water? <laughs> no, I'm good. <laughs> Did you get donations or something? <laughs> we got waters, brother. They, uh, yeah, they, they, they loaded them sure down. Okay. Hey man, I just want to tell you, I appreciate you, brother. Thank you, sir. How you doing? Having a good morning? If you had the ear of the entire church for a little while, what would be your chosen topic? What would you say? If I address the church today after yesterday, I believe it would be all about the presence of God and about the bridegroom coming to meet his bride because I believe it's so important that we realize that Jesus is coming back for a bride. And I believe that right now until he comes back, we need to, we need to worship him in a sense and just give it all. Every time we go into church, don't worry about nothing else but worshiping him at first and engaging him in his presence to totally transform our lives. Cause that's what I've experienced. That's what he put on my heart two and a half years ago. Ron, it's all about my presence. It's all about seeking my face. Cause once we seek it, once we seek his face and we get his presence, nothing else matters. All the flesh goes away and our spirit man rises up. And that's when he can spend time with us and take all the bad stuff out and just start putting more of him in taking all of our bad thoughts out and giving us the mind of Christ. I believe that's what the presence does. And you know, once you're in the presence, you don't want nothing else. That's all, you, that's just what you hunger and thirst for is more of your bridegroom because you have fell in love with something not of this world. He once was this of this world, but now he's in another realm, the kingdom realm. And once you fall in love with someone like that, you can never get it off your mind. It, it, it's like 24 hours a day, I guess when I sleep too, but when I'm, when I'm awake, that's all I think about is how good Jesus was to me to come down from heaven and sit beside me in a car and totally wreck my life. Changed me from an alcoholic for 25 years to a Jesus freak, a God chaser. It's all about his presence because that's what I, I remember the most is when he filled my car that day. 
he didn't care that I was totally drunk off of alcohol. But when he came in the car, I was totally sobered up and drunk in his presence. And that feeling, I guess it's kind of, I don't know if this is the thing to say, but I've never really done drugs, but I've seen a lot of drug addicts come in to the basement and they say, you know, that feeling, that rush we got the first time, that's what we want again. And with God, it's possible. With drugs, you can never get that feeling again. But with God, it's possible. If you'll just go in, sit, worship Him, stand, lay, however you do your thing, it don't matter. But it's all about start telling Jesus how much you love Him, how much you want to be with Him, and just giving it all to Him and realize it's not about you at that time but it's all about God, giving Him the glory, the worship that He deserves. And that high just starts, boom, it comes back. And the thing about this high, every time it gets greater, it gets greater and greater. So I just met this guy named Nathan, very precious. And uh, you gotta hear what the Lord had, did for him. By just literally giving him a revelation of his person, he delivered him completely. So you gotta hear this. So I'm Nathan Underwood, um, I'm 36 years old, and and uh, in May 3rd, 2015, um, the Lord just swooped me up um, after being addicted to uh, methamphetamine and cocaine and, and, and mainly opiates and prescription medication. And uh, I had trafficking charges and had been a convicted drug offense uh, several times throughout my life, but on May 3rd, 2015, I surrendered myself to uh, Providence Ministries with the intent on hopefully going there to not have to go back to prison. And uh, on May 3rd, 2015, uh, there was a little, little black man who preached there, and I couldn't tell you a word that he preached, but afterwards, it was like the Lord picked me up and and carried me to the altar and it's like I just floated to the altar and it was like the weight of the world lifted off my shoulders and I didn't fully understand in that moment but somehow I knew I would never do drugs again and uh, fast forward to today's day um, four, four and a half years later um, I've just been really walking in the fullness of the purpose and the plan that the Lord has for me. And um, every day I begin to realize uh, His great love for me. And I have this, just this unquenchable hunger and thirst that I just continue to, to go after Him. And every time that, that I come away with Him, He begins to, to fill that and then it just overflows from without of me to every, everyone that I'm around. And I guess the biggest thing for me is just learning the secret place and, and just learning that all those things that I used to let define me, um, um, they, they have no part of me now and I have no desire, but they have no control over me as I remain in Him. And He's just blessed me. Matthew chapter 6, verse 6, Jesus speaks to us about prayer. He says, when you pray, go into your most private room and closing the door, pray to your father who sees in secret. And your father who sees in secret will reward you in the open. This actual text is what the entire course is going to be driving home. We must spend time with God. We're going to talk practically about how to experience Him, experiencing and enjoying God from the scriptures. Thank you so much for signing up. I know the Lord is going to do something incredible in your life.